God recorded things in here that are definitely, definitely challenging for some of us. Amen? So the reality is this. God gave us this. I got this on. You're okay back there, guys? Amen. Good. Just double checking. I see back there. Just if there's something I need to do, flick something on. Amen. So I see something here. And there's so much I can say, but let's try to stay focused because I, wanna, I want you to look at that handout in a minute, okay? Notice the word in, in the first verse. King Solomon what? Loved. See that? What's that got to do with? The heart. Many, okay? Verse 2, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, you shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart. I've circled that word. After their gods, Solomon clave unto these. Clave is just the past tense of the word cleave. Okay? Don't let it scare you. Um, clave unto these in love. Watch this. Verse 3, and he had 700 wives. Come on. <laughs> just, uh, whose anniversary is it today? <laughs> no, really, come on. It really, it's just like 700 wives, princesses, 300 concubines. That'd be like common law. They have legal status, but that's it. And they were trades and deals of other kingdoms. Can you imagine that? And his wives turned away his heart. Listen, you're married today? I hope and pray your spouse, your husband, or your 
will not turn away your heart from God. Now, some people, over the years, I've been pastoring now for 28 years in Nova Scotia, and I have been involved in situations where someone gets saved after you're married, and one spouse comes to church and the other does not. And that's a tough situation. Amen? How do you do that? You love them. You get people, but if they won't listen to the word, you need to uh, just love them. It's tough. It's tough. And so, if you're not careful, you will compromise truth. You'll say, well, I won't, I don't need to do that. And there are things that you know God wants us to do as believers that can't to compromise the word of God. Got to be careful. We've got to be careful. He turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart, I've circled, every one of these I've circled, was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. Is, is God getting something across to us today about your heart, your heart, your heart? As I mentioned earlier, Brother Peter, uh, Pastor Peter Kiriopoulos, preached a message on the heart, and I thought, Man, it, I thought, this is where I'm going right here. This is my text. The heart, the heart, the heart. You know what? And then skip down here. Verse 6. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not, the watch this, this is in that little handout. He went not fully after the Lord. God wants you to go full speed ahead, <laughs> fully. Give him everything. No, no, don't hold back for God. Don't say, well, God, I just got, you know, I, just, I don't want to give that area of my life to you right now, God. God wants it all. He wants your heart. By the way, if he has your heart, he's got your body. He's got it all if he's got your heart. Amen. There's so much we can read, but I won't. We'll talk a little bit more about this tonight. We'll dwell a little bit more on the passage. Verse 9, And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. Your heart. You know, it breaks my heart to hear about people who have turned away from God. You know, people I've married, I've seen that in years. I've seen that to people coming to church and you say, man, wow, what a blessing. All of a sudden, something happens and their hearts are turned away from God. As I mentioned at the 10 o'clock hour, I don't want to be that excuse for someone to not come to church or not serve God because I'm a hypocrite. I act one way outside of this building, and I'm, I'm so-called holy here, but I'm, I'm a wretch out there. Wow, wow, utter hypocrisy to live like that, to be like that. We need to be consistent. You're saved. God, listen, situation ethics does not apply if it's wrong, it's wrong. It doesn't matter where you're at. If it's right, it's right. It doesn't matter what situation you're involved in. Right is right, wrong is wrong. Good is good, evil is evil. Nothing's changed in God, in the Word of God. Our society is changing. The standard of right and wrong, the bar keeps on changing. I can't keep up with the changes in our society. And our young people are being inundated with all of this stuff, philosophical. It's, it's hitting them. And so we're speaking about the family. And I thought, you know what? I, I need to preach a message on the heart because whether it be husband and wife relationship, whether it be parents and children, amen, well, any of these relationships, kids in the home getting along with each other, all these different things, 
What is the, the, the root of the problem? John the Baptist, in our study on principles, you know, like I've said before, I've used that to help people who are, you know, got addictions and so forth. But it works for everybody because it's Bible. And some of us could be addicted on something else. Like, how about this? Anger. Just can't. We're just not controlling that anger, not dealing with that kind of stuff, and other things. So, but in that, in that study, we went through all of these things, and you know what? I, my prayer is this, that you and I, as God's people, will keep our heart right with God. Is your heart right with God today? Is your heart where it should? I, I don't know your heart. In 1 Samuel, when they were choosing up uh, in 1 Samuel 16 there, and, and Samuel had a hard time letting go of Saul because God says, I've rejected Saul. I've, I've rejected him. I'm done with him. And that is, you, got, you need to go to the house of Jesse in 1 Samuel 16 verse 1. And, and the Bible tells us this. He says these words. How long, speaking to Samuel, how long wilt thou mourn, Samuel? In other words, God's saying, get up. Stop being depressed and discouraged. Get up. I got a job for you to do. There's a new king waiting to be anointed. And that process was something else. Jesse brings them all from oldest to youngest. Samuel, Lord, no, not him. Next, Lord, no, not him. You got any more, boy? We got him. He's out and tending the sheep. Go fetch him. <laughs> Go get him. Bring him here. God says, that's the one right there. The one daddy least expected was the one that God chose. That's the way God works. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 1 sometime. God's choices are not our choices. You know what? People look at that's foolish. Why would you choose that person? Because he's got a heart after God. That's why. That's why God chose that young man. That's why he overlooked all those other ones, other brothers. That young man had a heart after God. Thank God for that. Amen. Praise God. Oh, I, you know, you vote about you know, they committed adultery and murder. I, I know that was later in life. But in those early years, he had a heart after God. And by the way, even after, even though it took time to deal with that. One thing about David is when God's man approached him, Nathan the prophet, he dealt with it. He got it right. But I think we fail to realize you reap what you sow. It seems like Solomon started off on the right foot for a bit there. And then you read, he's already marrying strange women. That's not strange in the sense that unusual means in the sense of they don't know the Lord. Can I say this? In marriage, amen, so important. Again, I've already said, if you're, you get, one of you gets saved and the other one isn't saved, you're, that's the situation you're in. It? If you aren't married, and here's the guy and here's the girl, praise God, amen, they're both saved, amen? Hopefully both love God and serve God, amen? You can have a good marriage. Christ. Amen. But Solomon chose some women that worshiped other gods. They did. And that's what the chapter's all about here. So we're not going to get into this, but God is angry. We read that in verse 9. And he chastises Solomon. What does, what does Solomon face? He faces challenges from within with Rehoboam, and he faces challenges from outside. Amen? God says, I'm going to chastise you. As I mentioned a few Sunday nights ago, if you were with us on a Sunday night, I talked about the chastening hand of God. God loves you so much that he's going to discipline you when you're out of order. And if you say, I don't know if I've ever felt that, Come talk to me after church. Let me sit down with you. We need to have a discussion. If you've never felt God's chastening hand. Some of you might say, I wonder why this is happening. If you're saved, up. Okay, Lord. 
something I need to address in my life. Amen? It's what you need to do. So in this lesson here, we're going to focus on this. So what was Solomon's As you've already seen, I've already alluded to it in this passage in verse 6, his heart was not fully after the Lord. My question to you is this, is your heart fully after the Lord or is it divided? Are you united? Is your heart united? As you see that verse, the page on the, the little handout, Psalm 8611. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart. Can you dwell on that? Your heart may not be united. Your heart, singular, your heart, singular, may be divided internally. You're having, there's this battle going on inside. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart. And I will glorify thy name forever. What God, the Bible talks about, and I I didn't put those references in, but there's a bunch of references about singleness of heart in the New Testament. Singleness of heart. That's what God wants. Singleness of heart. Singleness. Singleness. Um, as we look at this passage here, Solomon, and again, as we look at this, you say, but he's got the wives, he's got this, he's got all these things. You know, just keep your place here. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter, let's see here, 20, or not, sorry, 17, 17. There's different passages about warfare that God gave instruction to the nation of Israel. Okay? So, God said that when there would be a king, you need to choose from your brethren. The brethren he's speaking about is those who are born from descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In Old Testament Israel, they were not allowed to have a king that was not from the seed of Abraham. Seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So he says in verse 14 of chapter 17, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt possess it, thou shalt dwell therein, and shalt say, I will set a king over me like all as as all the nations that are about me. That's what happened with Saul. The people wanted a king like Saul said. They they want a king like the nations around says, Hey, we got a guy here, Saul. And Saul started off good. He really did. But it didn't take long before there was problems. And God says, oh, do they want me to rule over them? They'd rather have an earthly king instead of me, God? Some people are like that. And then Samuel, God's had to tell Samuel, no, Samuel was all upset about it. And again, he said, Samuel, anoint him. They want a king? I'll let them have a king. See what happens. (laughs) <laughs> you want a king? I'll give you what you want. God will never give me anything that I shouldn't have. Oh, really? You better read your Bible. There's a lot of examples of things that have happened in history that God allowed, that God gave, because people are so stubborn sometimes in obeying God and listening. To you know what? Okay. We'll see how it goes now. So he gives instructions. And he talks about you can't have a stranger over them and so forth. Verse 16, but he shall not multiply horses nor cause the people to return to Egypt. No, multiply horses. They won victory, they accumulate more horses. You know what? Everything I'm going to read here, Solomon disobeyed. Everything. Verse 17, neither shall he multiply wives to himself. David did that too, you know. Solomon did it like, wow. Amen? Multiply wives. Look at the end of verse 17. Or that his heart turned not away. So he knew that he knew that if whoever you marry, and in Solomon's case, he married all these Egyptian women and all these other women that didn't know God, didn't believe in God. They brought idolatry to the nation of Israel. And even 
you know, you can say, Solomon, you wrote all these books. What are you doing, Solomon? Even the wisest man on the earth at this time fell into sin. You know, you think about that. David, a man of his heart, sin. Samson, Samson. Amen? Strongest man in the Bible, sin. Solomon, the wisest man, sin. Who do we think we are? I'm strong. Stronger than Samson? Stronger than the Spirit of God coming upon him more than any other person in the Bible? Stronger than David? A man after God's own heart. Solomon, the wisest man. Where's your epistle? Where's your book of the Bible in here? Doesn't happen. It's not there. All three men. That's a warning to us as men. And by the way, ladies too. I'm strong enough. You better be strong in the Lord. You better be strong in the Lord. Neither shall he greatly, at the end of verse 17, multiply to himself silver and gold. He did that too. God blessed him with riches, but he multiplied. He multiplied. He, mul he did everything that God. Watch this. Because I like verse 18. And it shall be that when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, he shall write him a copy of the law, of this law, and a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. Uh, the, the king was supposed to write it out. All the law had his own personal copy. Remind him of how he was supposed to be as a leader. Oh, I'll tell you. I mentioned this when I taught, look at that passage. My mama, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I think she got through it. She wrote the whole Bible out in these, these uh, spiral notebooks. <laughs> she wrote out every verse. She, she rewrote the Bible, word, word for word. She'd have her Bible here, and she'd be writing it out, writing it out. There's something about writing something. There really is. Something about writing it down. You know, meditating, thinking upon it, writing it down. This is the law. This is the law. You know what? That's what the kings were supposed to do. You study Israel's history, you'll see that didn't last very long. There was a period of time they couldn't even find the, book of, the books of Moses. They had to dig through a pile of rubble to find it. It was in a state of despair. Wow. Wow. What a So here we go. The Bible tells us, in Proverbs 4.23, keep your, thy heart with all diligence. You better keep your heart. You better be careful. This message is for everybody. This message is for your pastor. It's for everybody here. Amen? You listen, God says, for out of it are the issues of life. Every issue that takes place in this life, it originates in the heart. It originates in the heart. You know what? You might say, Pastor, you know what? He had all those problems. He had the problem. He multiplied this, multiplied women, all this. Hey, listen, uh, you know what his problem was? His wives, it was his heart. It was his heart. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is desperately wicked, deceitful above all things. He says, who can know it? You don't even know how wicked your heart could be. Amen. We need to understand that. Oh, I'm okay, Pastor. I hope you are. Do you know how wicked that heart can be? Whoa. Solomon, God, God recorded this. Are we going to learn from it or are we going to ignore it? Say, that's not me. I, I'll, I'll never be. I hope you're not. Jesus said in Psalm, Matthew 6, 24, no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. God does not want a warning. Is your heart united by God? Or is it divided? Joshua 24, 15, at the end of Joshua's life, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, and whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It says, make up your mind. Who are you going to serve? Make up your mind. 
Mount Carmel, 1 Kings 18, 21, Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. If Baal, then follow him. Make up your mind. Where's your heart? Where's your heart? If we're going to have strong marriages strong homes, it's going to begin in the heart of the people. Where's your heart? The Lord Jesus wrote to the church of the Laodiceans. It wasn't his church, by the way. It was their church. All the others were his church. He said in Revelation 3, 15, I know thy works, that thou art neither hot, cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, Invited. You're sitting on the fence. You haven't made the decision. You're trying to serve two masters. He says, I'll spew thee. That's the same word that you'd say you throw up vomit out of my mouth. You make me sick, he says. Make up your mind. Because thou sayest I am rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. Affluence has ruined Christianity. Oh, try me, preacher. Read 1 Timothy 6, what Paul warned to Pastor Timothy on, at Ephesus. It's the root of all evil. Money's not evil. It's the root of all evil. There's money connected to every evil that is outside these four walls. So that's terrible and wicked. Money is the root of that. He says, you're, you don't know that you're wretched, you're miserable, and you're blind and you're naked. Wow. You know what? Solomon didn't just wake up one day and decide to build high places for foreign gods. It was a slow process. It begins in heart. The Bible says in the Old Testament, a backslider in heart. In heart. Not in body. In heart. In your heart. It starts there. Then it starts to show up on the outside. Amen? The Bible says in that passage we read in 1 Kings 11, he says that David, David, there, or, or Solomon, clave unto these in love. The gods, the gods of these women. He was united with them, and close in affection. Amen. Let's look at this. You say, I, Pastor, I wonder if I got a, a divided heart today. Ask that question because I give you six things here. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Are you ready? Go to verse 2. We'll divert from this. Psalm 119, verse 2. Where's your heart? Where's your heart? How's your heart today? We can all put on a show here and make everything look just wonderful and we're in the right place with God. If we had a camera at home, if we had a camera, you know, you can buy these little cameras. I've seen them on Amazon. Can you imagine that? These little things, you just stick to something. These little tiny cameras. Put it at work. I wonder what we would see. Would we like everything that's going on on there? Amen? With, you know, how is things outside of here? Is it consistent? Or is there something I don't want everybody else to see here? But yet, we are here one way. We can handle it this way. But as soon as we leave, there's some things that take place, unfortunately. I hope your heart's not divided. As we've seen in the top verse, unite my heart, David said. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Unite my heart. First one, a spiritually divided heart is emotionally unstable. Emotionally unstable. The Bible tells us this in James 1. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We're living in a world of instability. And if there's going to be a place of stability, it ought to be, number one, your heart and your life. That people can see consistency in your life. Not on and off, hot, cold. You're consistent. You're consistent. You're living for Christ. You love Jesus. Yeah, you have your down days. You get it right. You get up and you keep on serving God. In that verse in Psalm 2, if you're there, blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek with the whole heart. He says, you're blessed. Amen? 
You keep him, seek him with your whole heart. A divided heart it is revealed in your countenance. Some would say, you know what? You can just tell sometimes, and again, we don't know the heart, but even Jesus said that from the heart comes out all these different things, anger and fornication, all the sin and wickedness. So I know one thing. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts that the apostles said they, they, were, they were ridiculed for preaching the word, and he says, "How we can't help but, but talk about what we've seen and heard. They've seen the risen Savior. They've heard him, and they talk. <laughs> I could tell you what people are watching and listening after you talk with them a while. I could tell you where you've been on social media. What are you talking about? Amen. What are you listening to? That affects you. That affects your heart. Instability. We got a country that's falling apart. We really do. You know, I don't think so, Pastor. The closer I get to God, the more I see it. And the more I'm anxious to get home to be with Jesus. But at the same time, God's left us. We better get busy for God and try to win the lost and try to help believers become stronger. Because we're, if, if, if you're, listen, if you have a divided heart, we're not going to see God work as he wants us to work. God, God can do anything. God can do anything. Amen? Praise God. But what are you doing? God wants to use you. Amen? Circumstances. Amen? Is your life full of worry or confusion? Say, God's not the author. The Bible says that in 1 Corinthians 14, I think it's verse 33. God's not the author of confusion. I'm full of confusion right now, preacher. I, I'm, are you spending enough time in the Word of God? Are you reading the Bible? Are you spending time? You're having some time of devotions? So a spiritually divided heart, it's, it's revealed with emotional in, un, instability. Are you unstable emotionally? a lot of things. I, I can allow through social media, news and all these other things and problems in the world. I, if, if, if I didn't, yeah, I know it's real. I know that. Whatever. Amen. I pray, pray, pray for countries. Pray for leaders. Amen. Amen. Try to help other believers. Okay, God, give me strength. Give me your, I, I need your strength. I need your help, Lord. Amen. Help me. Help me to think on these things. Philippians chapter 4. Amen. Help me, help me, Lord. Help me to get refocused. I can't, I, can't, I can't help everybody. I'd like to, but I can't. But there's one thing you can do for sure. Right here. Your own heart. Are, are, you, are you in the right place in your heart right now? Or is there something that needs to be done? Look at the next one. Verse 10 of Psalm 119. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. You ever see people wander? Believers wander? We're not talking about some man-made rules. We're talking about biblically-based truth and commandments. The Bible gives us that. And, and you see people wandering from that right place. That's a divided heart. There's division in that heart of that person that's wandering. Wandered for four, a total of 40 years there. God, the reason why they, 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 they were sentenced to that is because they wouldn't trust God. Unbelief. That's all it took. They just would, God says, you can do it, guys, come on. Ten came back and says, oh, we lots of nice fruit, look at this, all this, the fruit of the land. But there's giants in the walled cities, and we can't, we be not able and Joshua and Caleb said, we be able. And they chose to listen to the majority, and the people were wrong. We got to decide, a majority's always right. Not if they're not right with God. <laughs> listen, if they're not in tune with the Lord, the decisions that are made by people who don't have a heart after God, I guarantee you won't be what God wants for any church, any group, 
Amen. Your heart, where is it? People wandering. Some of you are wandering because your heart's not right. You're wandering in your life. God, God, listen, God doesn't want you to waste. Time is precious. Redeem the time. The days are evil. Time is passing. We're wasting time. You know, you listen, whether it be marriages, whether it be homes, whether it be churches, amen, I, we can't control the government. I'll vote, I'll, I'll vote in the next election whenever that happens, amen. In any election, provincial, municipal. But I know this. I'll do my best to cast my ballot for the one who lines up the most with the word of God and the scriptures. And that you won't find too many that will line up with much of the Bible. But my hope's in Christ. But I can have an effect here in this pulpit. I can have an effect in my marriage. Well, my wife, my husband, my kids, my parents, my, we all these reasons, excuses. Listen. I can't change anybody here. But you can change you through the power of the Holy Spirit of God working in you and through you if you want him to. Maybe you're grieving or quenching the Holy Spirit of God. It's either one of those two things. Grieve them is acts of commission. Quenching is acts of omission. And you can do both. You do things you shouldn't do or you don't do things that you should do and you're quenching the Holy Spirit in your life. Wandering. The Bible says this book's supposed to be a light onto your path. He wants to show you where to go. Well, you know, I'll make this decision. Oh, it's just a little decision. Are you so sure about that? One little turn in your life could lead you down a path that you never thought. As you look back, 5, 10, 15 years, oh, how did I get here? One simple little decision over here. You better bathe in there. You better seek the face of God. We're so always, oh, God, give me this and give me to give me money and give me food and give me all these things. And yes, pray daily bread, amen. But you better start seeking his face first. Seek his face. God, give me wisdom. God, help me. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Amen? After I heard that message the other day, it just, just touched my heart so much. I thought, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. God, I need your help. I need your help. Amen. God, help me. Why would I start praying for everybody else if I don't get my heart right? Amen. Hey, Lord, fix everybody else's heart but mine. That don't work. I'm sorry. That don't work. You start with home base. Start with you. Amen. One time, D.L. Moon, what he did, he says, he drew a circle. He says, you want revival? Here, step in that circle. It starts with you. It starts with you. It starts with me individually. I want to, if, if so-and-so would get their heart right, and this one would get, and this one, and this one. How about you? How about your heart today? It's a wandering heart. A spiritually divided heart. It's a wandering heart. I hope your heart's not wandering. What are you looking for out there? What does the world have? you got Christ. You got the promises of God. You got the blessings of God. What do, you, what do you want out there that's better than that? Come on. What's better than what you got in Jesus Christ? What are you going after? It's just going to be heartache. That's all it is. It's just going to ruin your life out there. Amen. Amen. Psalm, uh, third one here. Psalm 119, verse 36. Amen. There, there's a whole bunch. I preached to this chapter years ago. I don't know when. A spiritually divided heart is covetous. In other words, it's all about me. It's all about self. Look at that verse, verse 36. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness. You know, the Bible tells us in Colossians 3, 5, that covetousness, which is idolatry. I got to have this. I got to get this. I got to have this. I got to have this. I don't know about you, but uh, with the, the prices of things going on, I hope you're reevaluating where you're spending money. I hope you're th rethinking some things. Amen? By the way, to serve God, listen, I, I, I know this. I, 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 it's over $2. Amen? Gas. You going to still come? I remember Brother Sarah, 
in Zambia. Many churches were planted in Zambia. Amen. He told me this. He said, Brother Barrett, he says people come for hours. They walk for hours to church. They come in the morning. They congregate. And they spend all, pretty much all afternoon. And then they walking back home later afternoon. Listen, I dare to say Christians in this country would even dare do like that. They didn't all have cars. Hey, Amen. They didn't all have cars. We got to get together. We got a fellowship. Get under the preaching. They ate together. Every Sunday was like that. Revival took place. Churches were planted in their localities, and then they started to grow. Now, both brother Sarah and his wife, they're in heaven. He came to North America. It's the in Plainville, Connecticut. He got here. No, sir, he got here. He says, my heart's not here. This world, so this part of the world is so worldly. And he says, man, my heart, I want to get back. He had health problems. They only came here because the pastor banged and pleaded with them to take her some health issues. And they take her something. But they said, we've got to get back. Listen, God's people are. That's where God called us. And both of them died. Both of them are buried there in Zambia. Because they love those people. Amen. It was important to them. This is where God wanted them. Boy, I'll tell you, I got some good memories of seeing brothers Sarah. Didn't see him very often. Man, I'll tell you, covetous. We live in a covetous society. Stuff, stuff, stuff. I got to get rid of stuff. <laughs> got to get the dumpster in the driveway. What are we doing? It's not all about stuff. Amen. We live in a world so full of covetousness. It's all about self. Amen. It's all it is. The Bible tells us in Philippians 2, 3, that we're supposed to esteem others better than ourselves. That self-esteem thing, it's, it's, it's perfectly contradictory to what the Bible says. Esteem others better than yourself. I don't know where they're coming up with some of this stuff in some of those quote-unquote Christian circles. Look at number four. I know, got to move on. Good afternoon. Psalm 119, verses 55 to 56. I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night. Your heart breaking can't sleep. Saying, God, I need you. God, please do something. Amen. Oh. And I've I, and I've kept thy law. He says, I remember you, Lord. I've kept your law. He says, This I had. In other words, I was consistent. You know what problem? Again, inconsistency. You know why? Spiritually divided. The Bible tells us when, when Paul says he was put in the ministry, he said, God counted me faithful. He said, God said I was faithful. He put me in the ministry. Amen. You know, we got this idea, well, we'll put someone in the ministry to make them faithful. No. Faithful, you're counted worthy of service. In that principle. Oh, well, give them something to do to make them faithful. No, make sure the heart's in the right place. If your heart's in the right place, you will be faithful to God. That's the outworking of that. Amen? Knowing God, following God, your heart's united in truth. A divided heart is inconsistent. A divided heart, verse 103 how sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Listen, I know that's about the word of God. This whole book, Psalm 119, this whole chapter is about that. But listen, a divided heart is sour. You can tell a divided heart by a, the sourness. When they're hurt, they're, they're, they're angry, they're bitter, they're sour. Where do you turn? If you're, you, have, you face some challenges in life, things don't always go the way you want them to go. How do you deal with problems? 
Who do you turn to? Do you seek advice and counsel from godly friends and family? And not, not wrong. But let me ask you this. Do you turn to the Word of God to ask Him to help you? The Bible tells us in Matthew 4.4, 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The more His words you consume, the more nourished you will be, and it will help prevent some of these, these divisive things in the heart. Amen? Emotional instability, wandering, being covetous. Being inconsistent, being sour in your disposition and your spirit. There's something wrong with somebody. It's got a bad spirit about it. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, verses 1 through. I don't have time. You want to turn there, you can, but I'm just going to read. And you, that's why I gave you spots to write notes in this thing. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine, milk without money. For do ye spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which satisfieth not? If your heart's not right, you're going out there, you're wasting your time, your talents, and treasures on things that just don't satisfy. And you still empty. What's his advice? Hearken diligently unto me. Hearken to God. And eat ye that which is good. What are you consuming? On media and entertainment. Amen. What are you taking in? What are you taking in to, into your mind and your heart? And let your soul delight itself in the fatness. Incline your ear, he says, and come unto me, and here in your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Are you going to listen? He says, hearken diligently. You're going to listen carefully? It takes time. It takes attention. Some aren't willing to do that. You can tell. they got a divided heart. He says, second of all, better eat that which is good. You better, are you discerning as to what you're taking in? Listen, uh, listen, there's preachers out there. They're good, solid, eh? Bible-believing preachers and good, good stuff there. But do you, can you tell the difference? What are you taking in? Amen. Choose that which is good. Amen. Thirdly, let your soul delight itself in fatness when we listen. Amen. Even when we eat that which is good. We must let our soul delight itself in fatness. You know what? You could sit here. This is not about me. I could sit at Teen Thunder on, on, on Friday morning, and I can have a good spiritual meal, but if I have a stubborn or bad attitude, my soul will not delight as God wants it to delight in what I'm listening to. You be here. Set aside. Whoever the preacher is, doesn't matter. And they're preaching the word. And if you're consuming, taking in things that are not good for you, I'm not talking about physical food, dietary. I'm talking about things that are, are affecting you spiritually. What are you reading? What are you watching? You could be here. You could say, man, uh, you know, the, the message may be exactly what you need. But yet, here you are. You're not getting it. It's not hitting the heart like it should. And lastly, number six, verse 46 of Psalm 119, and I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. I love that. You're at liberty. You're seeking God's word, seeking truth. Watch this. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. The Lord deals with me on that. In a smaller way, not with kings. Like I mentioned, I was yesterday in Kennecook, and the Lord was tugging my heart after the man told me, and I should have, regardless, you could give a track or a God, John, or Romans. Shouldn't be ashamed. Talk about Christ. Just because you're not a pastor doesn't mean you shouldn't talk about Christ. Some people think that. They want to be the pastor, the pastor, deacons, teachers. No, you too. You're a believer. You got something to share with people. This world's falling apart. They need something. They need Christ. I, and you will not be ashamed. A divided heart is a heart that's ashamed. 
and I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. My hands will lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. Does Monday to Saturday, as I've already said a few times, Sunday school and now, does Monday to Saturday line up with what I see right now here as I look at you? And when we say goodbye and we say, hey, brother and sister in Christ, amen, good attitude, good, amen, everything's fine. Is that the way it is outside here, Monday through Saturday? Are you afraid to speak of your faith? Oh, well, give a testimony here. And even sometimes that's a challenge. Testify. Amongst believers, you should never be afraid to testify. If you got something to say, God touched my heart. I read the Bible. I read the scripture. God answered my prayer. I talked to some folks. We, you know, we, we have prayer requests. Amen. The problem is this. How, the problem is this. How can we give the gospel to someone when our life is in direct opposition to the message we're trying to deliver. How does that even work? That, will hold, that holds back. We are his hands. We are his ears. We are his eyes. We are his feet. We're the body of Christ. All those who are saved, you're part of that body, a member of that body. How are the feet doing? Amen. How are the feet doing this morning? You say, you know what? I, I, I need to go see the doctor. You know, I got, you know, physical things. Amen. And you should get the checkup and the physical and all that. If you can get that. And my, my heart's been breaking for some people. I couldn't get it. But now they can, some of them. But have you done this? Have you checked your heart status? And I'm not talking about the pump inside here. It's the thing that's in your life that is so much affected by this world as we interact with it. And it could either you would be inclined, leaning to Christ and serving him or leaning in this world. You're either being conformed to one or the other. Have you had that checkup? I hope you have. I hope this paper here will remind you of some things. This is just a small, small sampling just out of Psalm 119. There's so much more in the Bible. But we need, to, we need to examine ourselves today. Self-examination today. Your heart, where is it? We want a strong marriage? We're talking about home and the family. I want a strong marriage. I want my kids to love God and serve God. Amen. How are your kids doing? What are they doing? Amen. It all. Amen. It starts here. Amen. It starts here. Let's all stand. Let's bow our heads. I'll pray. Father, again, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this time that we've had together. Lord God, we need your help. We need your strength. God, again, you know the needs here about the hearts and lives of people. God, help us. Help us. Help us today. We need your help today. God, if there anyone here who's not saved, help them to open their eyes and their heart to you today. For those who are saved, Lord God, help them to examine themselves and see where they're at today, Lord God. Help them, help them today. Oh God, we need your help. We need your strength. Maybe today, with every head bowed and every eye closed, no one looking around, you say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm saved today. Would you pray for me? Is there one like that? I'm not sure if I died right now, I'd be in heaven with the Lord. Do you know that for sure? If you don't know that for sure, would you just slip your hand up? Christians, how, how did the list go? This is just a little list. You say, Pastor, I need some prayer today. I need some help today. I need some prayer. I need God's help and strength today. Would you pray for me? With your heads bowed and eyes closed, no one looking around. We just slip your hand up for a minute. I need prayer today. Would you pray for me? Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Amen. Father, you know the needs, you know the hearts. Have your will and way be accomplished. But Father, we'll just pray that you would again help us to act upon what we've heard, Lord God. Help us not walk out of this building without doing something about this.
that you've revealed to us. Help us. Help us to pray. May your will and way be accomplished. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to